<laughs> Hello everybody. Greetings from Seattle. We're here live in the kitchen of Manja Bene Catering with Chef Debbie Brownstein, my sister. I came home. I need to see family, um, see some clients, and just breathe the American air. It's been a long time. So we decided to keep doing our shows. And since my sister Debbie is a chef and she's a wonderful kitchen, we are going to be cooking live from Seattle, Washington. We have friends, of course, in Cagliari, Sardinia, uh, Italy, cooking a wonderful recipe with us. So we have Laura Secchi in Cagliari. And today we decided to do something special. Ciao Laura. Ciao, ciao a tutti. Buongiorno. I'm Hello. sorry I had to come to America, but it's good to see you. <laughs> no, I, I, I can hear. Could Mi dispiace. Eh? Ah. Di essere venuto in America, ma è bello vederti. Sì, me too, John. <laughs> okay, so everybody, as you know, today we're going to pay homage to Pecorino Romano, a very special cheese. And even if its name is Pecorino Romano, it's actually a Sardinian cheese at least 95%. So today we're going to cook together, Debbie in Seattle, Laura in Cagliari. We actually are going to have a guest come and visit us later from the Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I have to taste the pasta, so we have, to, we have to cook the same thing in both continents. Otherwise, I couldn't do my job, which is a hard job, which is to taste the final product. Oh, we have a guest from Los Angeles here. Good morning. Hi. Ciao. Buongiorno. Hi. How are you? Buongiorno. Good. Good. So everybody, we just, good to see you. Good to see you too. We, like I said, we decided to. We have had some wonderful followers, and uh, they 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 love Sardinia. They love the culture. Uh, uh, Tora went on her honeymoon to Sardinia, and she's a foodie and an artist and a, and a musician. She came to our dinner in Los Angeles. She supported us. So we decided to start having our, our, our followers come and visit and ask a question. So uh, please, Tora, stay online because we're going to have you interact with us later. Great. I'll be here. Fantastico. Okay, so let's now talk about Pecorino Romano. First of all, I wanted to thank the consortium of Pecorino Romano. Gianno, ciao Gianni, grazie for um, offering us the Pecorino Romano that we're using tonight and for supporting us. So thank you guys. It's important for us. We need, um, you know, support in order to properly uh, communicate a product and a culture. We, everybody has to do their part. So thank you guys. Okay, Pecorino Romano, it's a legendary cheese. What do I mean by legendary? We have written records of Pecorino Romano from the first century. So we're talking about a cheese which is 2,000 years old. And it's also legendary in another way. The Roman Legion, they used Pecorino Romano as their energy bar. And every soldier got one ounce of Pecorino Romano every day. So this is 27 grams of Pecorino Romano, and this is what the soldier would get every day, too, for his calcium, for his salt, for energy, and, you know, I think I'm going to use this when I golf now. Forget the chocolate bars. This is great. You have a beer and a Pecorino and a piece of Pecorino Romano, and I think you, I mean, you get a hole in one, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so, Romano, let's take a deep dive before we start cooking into the cheese. First of all, it is a DOP, Denominazione di Origine Protetta, okay? There are four Sardinian cheeses that are DOP. Romano is the first, okay? And what does it mean? 
then obviously the origine protetta means there's a geographic area for a certain product and there are certain rules of how that product is made with the local ingredients and the culture from which that product comes. So DOP is a very, very important concept. I can't say it enough. When you go to the supermarket, when you buy a cheese, you really, when you understand now that Romano is a DOP, there's nothing else that can copy it because if you buy the DOP, you know you're getting Simo Menno Fiber, slide, echo. You know you're getting raw milk. Okay, in ancient times, we only made cheese with raw milk, which means it's not pasteurized. So you have the local milk, you don't have to have to be so careful about killing all the bacteria because you're in a controlled environment and you get much more flavor and much more taste from the raw milk. Uh, you need at least, for it to be a Romano DOP, at least five months of aging. Romano is a, a harder cheese. You do a couple layers of salt. So in order to have amount, the amount of time to put the salt a couple times on the cheese to age it properly before you can really get to its um, minimum taste, you need five months. Uh, we use... In order to make cheese, you need rennet, okay? Rennet is the substance which helps coagulate the milk. Without rennet, the milk will not coagulate. And in Sardinia, we often use lamb rennet. In the DOP Pecorino Romano, only lamb rennet. In Italian, it's called caglio. That's in the parentheses there, caglio. Romano, they're big cylinders, okay? Big cylinder wheels, and this is another part of the Roman tradition of how you store them, of how you salt them. And um, it's very important that the cylinders are big in order that the cheese keeps the proper amount of water and, um, and texture, okay? We have, so let's take a look at some numbers. It's incredible um, if you think about Romano and how uh, much Romano comes to America. Uh, let's take a look at some facts. First of all, Pecorino Romano, you probably didn't know it. It's the most exported cheese from Italy to the USA. 95% of Pecorino Romano is made in Sardinia. The other 5% is made in Lazio and in a small part of Tuscany in Grosseto. Okay, but it's really coming from a Roman, ancient Roman tradition, and then the Sardinians, of, of course, because the Romans found the best pasture, the best salt, the, the best uh, milk, uh, and the best environment to make Romano, that is why you find Pecorino Romano as a Sardinian uh, cheese. We import more Romano from Italy than any other cheese, okay? So it's surprising to you, but even more than Parmigiano Reggiano. Why? Because the Americans love uh, a lot of dishes which you use Romano. Let's take a look at some of the piatti, some of the dishes that you make with pecorino, some of the most famous ones, okay? So, you make pecorino Romano with pasta la carbonara. You can't make a carbonara without a, a pecorino Romano. Cacio e pepe. Cacio e pepe is a shepherd's uh, dish, as you learned with us a couple months ago. And cacio e pepe, of course, is Romano, has to be there. Pasta alla grigia, la stessa cosa, the same thing. Pesto alla genovese. Even if you're surprised, you might think that you only use Parmesan. No, 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 no. You need the salt in the Pecorino Romano and you need that flavor as well. A carbonara, of course. We're going to do that next week with Due Cucina in Seattle. You'll see the perfect Cabarana, and you see how we use um, Pecorino Romano with Fiore Sardo. And then, finally, La Matriciana. And, uh, you know, this is, when on a cold winter day, what is better than a Matriciana, right? Okay, so I think that uh, that about sums it up for the introduction of Romano. Now, you need to understand that in the food industry in general, but... Uh, uh, with Romano, such a, an ancient history, of course, you respect the tradition, and I think the, the Conservative of Pecorino Romano does that very well, but 
you also need to stay up to date with the new markets and new tastes and new trends. So this is why uh, Pecorino Romano, they have, uh, we have introduced now four different types of Romanos. One is Pecorino Romano Reserva, which is the least amount of months is 14, then we have 14, 18, 20, 24, and 30, all with, with different flavors for depending on what you want to make. And we're going to look at recipes this year and take a look at when you would use a Reserva 14 months, when you would use a Reserva 30, 30 months. We have Pecorino Romano with less salt. So maybe if I want to go to the golf course and I don't want to eat too much salt, maybe my little snackerino, I do less salt. And so, you know, mm, well, fantastic. Okay. Mm. Now we have Montana, Pecorino Montana, which means only Pecorino Romano made above 600 meters. And the cheese has to be made within 10 kilometers of where the cheese has been collected. Okay. And then finally, this, this snack that I told you about, snackerino. It's really um, a school box. Like if you send your kids in your lunch box, instead of putting like a candy bar, you know, what a wonderful thing to put a nice little piece of, of uh, Pecorino Romano and they, you know, they pop that in before gym or something, or just when they need an energy boost. Same thing with athletes. Like I said, you know, I'm a golfer and you run out of energy after nine holes and I think a piece of Romano is a perfect solution for that. Um, and you're respecting tradition. You know, that's how the ancient soldiers did it. Why don't we do it to fight our battles? So um, I'm going to start looking at, the, at the, the board for questions. We are going to start to cook. So Laura, Debbie, Laura, can you present the dish that you want to prepare? Yes. Today we're going to prepare spaghetti mm. with uh, pecorino romano cheese, uh, fava beans, and bottarga. That is the uh, cured egg of the moonlet. Okay, you know. Fantastic. Hey, Laura. Yeah. Debbie here. She she's going to cook something different. We had we had a solution. Deb, come here for a second. I want you to show. I want you to show. Um, so we thought since we didn't find fresh fava beans at the farmer's market. Yeah, I, I imagine. Okay. We thought of doing asparagus. Yes, very well. It's very good. Okay. I think very it'll go well with Botarga too. And? We tested it first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> allora, Laura. Before starting cooking, I have yeah. some questions for you. The first question is a funny, it's a story. Can you give me one minute and I tell you the story? Yeah, sure. So the first time I came to Italy, it was 1988. And I was an innocent cyclist, uh, you know, living in Florence and not knowing much about Italian culture, even though I did speak the language because I was studying at university. And I went to a restaurant and I ordered a, a nice uh, dish with, you know, like frutti di mare, you know. And I said, oh, can I have some Parmesan? And I almost got killed. The, the, the chef, he, he almost killed me. No, 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 no Parmesan in the fish. Um, and so I'm curious today because today we actually are, you're one of the best chefs in Sardinia. Sei uno delle chef migliori della sala Sardegna. No, oh, no, no. So I trust you. And Thank today you. you're taking a salty ingredient, pecorino romano. Yeah. And a salty, fishy ingredient, yeah. botarga. Yeah. And you're putting them together. Yeah. Fish and cheese. Yeah, but it matched together very well. So, John, I tell you a thing. In our restaurant, yeah. when a client asks uh, for uh, parmesan uh, on uh, spaghetti with seafood, uh, we always say, a cook is dying. And which of us <laughs> is the cook dying? <laughs> so <laughs> this is the joke. <laughs> OK, 
okay? <laughs> because uh, mm, usually uh, we don't put uh, um, on the spaghetti with seafood uh, the parmesan or pecorino on the top, uh, like this, um, raw, grated, uh, like this. No. Uh, but um, to mix uh, cheese and fish um, is um, a, a particular uh, um, recipe that uh, it, it works. So, um, for, yeah, for example, um, uh, I'll tell you another, another thing. Uh, I know uh, only uh, one recipe, Sardinian recipe, uh, that mix uh, um, ricotta salata, that is, uh, you know, uh, the salted ricotta, that is uh, a little bit hard, um, with uh, uh, sepia. Uh, sepia is not a squid. Sepia is, a, I, I don't know the name in English. Cuttlefish. Uh, yeah. Cuttlefish. Yes. Yeah. In cabras, that is a small village uh, near Oristano, that's my city. Um, they only only here. I, I don't know um, something similar in the rest of Sardinia. Uh, they cooked uh, the spaghetti or pasta with uh, uh, punto seppia uh, and ricotta salata. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are going to prepare uh, a, a cream of cheese that is uh, soft um, and is uh, um, mantecata, you know, uh, that is a, a particular um, method so, of, the of cooking. Yeah. Sorry to disturb you. Since Mantecare mm -hmm. is such an important concept for so many dishes. Yeah. Especially like cacio e pepe and the dish you're making si. tonight. Mantecare comes from butter. It's a Spanish word for butter. Um, but not always to use butter. Sometimes you use butter, sometimes you use fat, sometimes you use olive oil, sometimes you use cheese and, and the water from the <laughs> pasta. The important thing is you're using some sort of starch, like a risotto or like a pasta, you're using some sort of fat, and then you're mixing it properly. So, Laura, today I want you, when you mantecare this pasta, Simone, as carefully as possible, let's get that close up of how you mantecare, because I think it's a very important step for this pasta. Uh, yes, uh, it's uh, very important and it's uh, um, um, mantecare, uh, you can do it uh, with riso or pasta uh, because uh, uh, the shortening, uh, um, uh, butter or oil or cheese, uh, or cause, with uh, amido, uh, I, I don't know amido. Uh, um, Starch. Uh, starch, yes, with the starch of pasta or, or a riso, uh, makes a cream, uh, something very creamy. Um, that is the particularity uh, of risotto, and in that case, uh, of, uh, for example, cacio e pepe. Cacio e pepe um, is, a, a, I think, is a, a, the m one of most difficult pasta to realize uh, because uh, yes. uh, you uh, have to use only two ingredients so uh, the water hot water and pecorino cheese pecorino romano uh, and, and uh, you have to mix the, uh, these uh, two ingredients uh, in order to uh, have uh, um, a cream. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, okay. But so if, you, if you put uh, um, uh, too much water or uh, too much um, cheese, uh, um, it doesn't work. So uh, it, the difficulty is uh, the, the quantity of the water in the cheese, uh, especially. Okay, so we're going to pay particular attention to that. Okay. Hey, Debbie, um, when you <coughs> saw this recipe, was it strange for you to see fish and cheese, or is it uh, you, you understood it immediately? 
Well, I understand the batarga, unlike a fresh fish, which has a kind of a milder, delicate flavor, even a stronger fish, batarga has a very earthy, fairly strong flavor. You use it mostly um, as a topping. Yeah. Uh, just to add a little bit of, as a salt feature and add a little bit of flavor and yeah. complexity. And the complexity of uh, Pecorino Romano is very intense. So is Botargo. The two work together, kind of as your salt, kind of complex flavor. So I get that. Whereas with a fresh fish, I'm mean, even a fishier fish, um, dairy or cheese will just kind of compete with the delicate flavor of the fish. So okay, that's I see that. That's helpful. So I wanted to tell everybody today that the recipe that Laura is going to present and that Debbie is going to replicate with asparagus. It seems simple, but as you heard, there are two or three keys to getting this recipe right. One is mantecare, and that takes some experience with the right balance of water and cheese and the right temperature of the water and the starch. And that just takes some experience, okay? And some days it doesn't work. The other concept is we are using pecorino romano and botarga. So salt, salt. Therefore, we always, in Italy, we almost always put salt in our water for the pasta. But today, we are not going to put any salt in the water of the pasta because there's enough salt in the Romano and the Botarga. So yes. Laura, I think that we can start cooking now. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Oh, yes, this is, <laughs> this is very important. Uh, we don't have to put salt in the water because uh, um, pecorino romano is uh, quite salty and it's uh, perfect. Okay. So okay. I I so I already put uh, uh, the pasta. Is uh, okay. Okay. So I think in two minutes uh, we can uh, mantecare. <laughs> okay, let me ask Tora. Tora, si. um, do you have any questions about what we're doing today or about Sardinia or, I don't know, you want to move to Sardinia, we can help you find a house, whatever. <laughs> oh, I'm going to talk to you about that. Um, so, oh, first I want to say it's so great to be here. Um, to, you know, take some time out from my busy week and visit Sardinia with you all. I love it. Um, and I, uh, I was totally wondering about the, you know, pairing of the cheese with fish items. And thank you for answering that. So now I'd like to know, how would you recommend pairing Pecorino Romano dishes with wine? I love the question. Okay, so Laura um, has to cook now. So we have the question, Laura, tu inizi a cucinare e poi rispondiamo alla domanda. Ha chiesto okay. come si fa l'abbinamento col vino. Sì, 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 ho capito, ho capito. Okay. Okay. So, I put in the pan pecorino romano, great eat pecorino romano. And then... How much? Yeah, and then... I take the water and just mix. You have to do that out of the fire, okay? Because you don't and want to melt the cheese? Yes, it's better. Um, and you have to add the water slowly. Okay, so you add the water a bit, a little bit at a time. Yes. So you get the right texture, but so you don't add too much water. Oh. Yeah. Ma, um, is it almost like the texture of ricotta? Uh, yes, something similar. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, I can drain spaghetti. Okay. And put directly into the pan. Okay, Simo, we're cooking on here too if you want to put the two cameras on. A 
As you can see, yeah. the pecorino with water is very creamy. Yeah. So we can have fava bean that we have peeled, so like this. Okay. Oh, beautiful. And now we are ready. It's just simple. And then botarga, grated botarga. Botarga is salty, but uh, is uh, uh, also um, lightly bitter and uh, sweet too. So is a, a, a different kind of um, of salt. Okay. Yeah, my sister says umami. Yeah. Right? So, Are you saying one for Batalla? Uh, yes. Yes. Ready? Queen? Ready? Ooh, let's see. Yeah. Bella. Bella, semplice. Fantastico. Okay, so we're yes. finishing up here. We're almost ready. Um, I'd invite like? anybody who's watching, if they have any questions, I have the chat board open. And so, are you tasting using an induction stovetop? Hai una stovetop induzione, Laura? Una? Stupid stove. No, no. Hai una piastra francese, si chiama. È una piastra diretta. No, non ho l'induzione, non mi piace l'induzione, I don't like induzione. Ok, no, it's not induction. Ok, la, um, so are we ready to taste? No. You know, do you, it's do a really like hard it? job, but somebody has to do it. You know, Simone and I, when we started thinking about doing these videos, I was like, oh, it's so much work and travel and preparation <laughs> and live, so many things can go wrong. But then I get to taste at the end, okay. <laughs> Siamo pronti? Oh, yeah. Debbie. Oh, you made the cream perfect. Perfect. Oh, so pretty with the nice. asparagus. Mm. Wow, that's a really nice combo. So easy. That's like a five minute pasta dish. We're vaccinated, by the way. <laughs> In America, we're, we're really good at vaccinating. Mm. Mm. It's not too salty. Madonna mia. I didn't add any salt. It's good, Laura, because the spaghetti is good. Really? Tesoro. I didn't add any salt. Me too. <laughs> Adesso te la do anche a te. Allora. <laughs> allora, now, Tora. So, she was asking us. Does it for work? This, this pasta, what wine do we, do we pair it with? Buona. Gabretta? Yeah. Sì. Buona. Okay, con che vino abbiniamo? Um, a red wine for me. Like Carignano, I, I love Carignano. That is a, a wine of the south of Sardinia. Mm. Okay, like, like I'm not too aggressive, a little more mellow than a, than a Carignano, with lots of red fruit and some, you know, sometimes we have in those little wines, you can taste the asparagus and Carignano is wonderful. They're often cherry. 
Yeah, we're gonna need all of that. Me, no me, no me. So, everybody, one of our goals is to promote Sardinian culture, tradition, eating simple, eating healthy, and a lifestyle in which you live longer. And that is one of our goals when we do these, these videos, is just to share with you the culture of Sardinia and the tradition. Because in America, sometimes we move so fast and everything is so new that seeing such traditions, age old traditions, it's something which brings you back to Mother Earth and it brings you back to more of a human, humane uh, way of living. And that's, you know, when we talk about Sardinia and why you live longer, yes, as Debbie was saying, it's part because we do eat really simple, genuine foods, but it's also because we have a wonderful lifestyle in contact with nature, eating with people, sharing things. That's very important too, having big tables and long meals. And you know where your food comes from. And you know where your food comes from. Absolutely. We eat artichokes when it's artichoke season. You know, otherwise we don't eat them. So with that goal in mind, we also want you to be able to cook these dishes. And so I have prepared for you a gift box with all the ingredients in the recipe. So today, if you want, we have one pound of Pecorino Romano D.O.P. A nice, big, fat piece of botarga. Oops. There you go. It's like a mirror. <laughs> That's a big piece of botarga. I've got right here. Oh, thank you. Artisan pasta. Thank you, Chef Shop Seattle. Some artisan Italian pasta. Some grated botarga in case you're in a hurry and you don't want to grate your botarga or because the part of the botarga we send you is so beautiful that you want to slice it thinly and put it on a piece of toast with a drizzle of olive oil or some artichokes as an appetizer to get your taste buds going. And then we have, of course, you need, whenever you're cooking, this recipe doesn't necessarily call for it, but you can always have some good organic olive oil. And since this olive oil is the tops, and since we're sending you a box, we're sending you a beautiful, organic, very low acidity uh, olive oil. Like I said, one pound of pasta, a quart of uh, olive oil, the grated batarga, a whole piece of batarga, and one pound of batarga. We're trying to get the prices down, the shipping, if you pick it up in San Francisco, Presidio or Seattle and Maple Leaf or um, Cap Hill, it's uh, cheaper. Otherwise, home delivery, delivery from us to you, 125. Support your artisans, support your shepherds, support John and Simone, support eating well and living longer and celebrate the joys of life. Um, I think that it's been a fun day. I've had fun. Eh? Did you all have fun? Can I add one thing? Yeah, no, no, we're not going anywhere. Okay. <laughs> um, most Americans, there, we sell a lot of domestic cheese and even imported cheese that's grated that people think is the real Pecorino Romano. It's not, it tastes different, it's complex, it's delicious. I added no salt to this recipe. It was very easy and it is delicious. So um, find this cheese, either get the box or find it somewhere here and make sure you get the real thing because it's, 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 it's incredible. We've also been brainstorming a bit, and today's, we're not going to keep people too longer, but we've been brainstorming about some new recipes. And so I think that, you know, maybe in the future we could take a look at, at revisiting some traditional American recipes. Like even, you know, macaroni and cheese. I mean, Debbie, she makes me the most wonderful macaroni and cheese with Romano. So, you know, that would be worth it. To, to, Absolutely. Or even a Super Bowl dip. Yeah. Nacho <laughs> cheese dip. Nacho cheese. Delicious. Nacho cheese dip with Romano. Uh, Tora from Los Angeles, do you have anything to say before we, we go here? 
Um, oh my goodness. I'm going to go out and get a bottle of Carignan, um, or Carignano in Italian. And, uh, and I'm so excited to uh, make this recipe at home. And, um, oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked. And, and like my taste buds are going like crazy right now. <laughs> well, we want to thank you very much for participating. Uh, it's really nice to have just people follow us and show their appreciation. And since you love Sardinia, uh, we just want to thank you from our heart. Um, and for your time, it's precious and, uh, you know, it makes uh, our job uh, much easier and more fun. Well, it's so fun and, you know, wonderful to be here with you. It's been really great for me here too. Much love from Fantastic. Los Angeles. Yay, we're coming soon. So everybody, I think we're gonna, we're gonna go now. We have a couple of questions before we go. So, uh, love this, hope to find the greens in Holland. I can send them to you in Holland. Pasta vino. Yes, the, the Laura c'è una domanda che le fava beans. Okay. They're asking if you are boil them. Se li, li fai sbollentate. Si. Uh, we have boiled for two minutes only. Only two minutes. You have, them. You have to put them uh, in uh, water with ice for one, five minutes. Because in this way, uh, they um, are green. Uh, if you okay. cook uh, too much, uh, they are brown, so they are not very good. Okay. So. But so have a bowl of ice minutes. water next to your beans. Yes. So you can stop like the cooking. Like asparagus, yes, it's the same. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, see, we're in two different parts of the world, but we understand each other. Grazie. Oh, grazie ragazzi, è stato bellissimo. Next Grazie week, a voi. Next week, same time, same channel, we will be, be with my friend Filippo from, uh, he's from uh, Tuscany and he has two restaurants in Seattle with Davide. They're wonderful homemade pasta restaurants and he is going to make with us la carbonara perfect. Fantastico. Next week, 12 noon. Nine o'clock in Italy, be here and eat with us and cook with us. Ciao, grazie. Ciao.